This is ground affected. My name is your dad, and I 3D print and paint statues because I have nothing else better to do with my time. I like this Uniformation GK2 printer, and I mention this quite often in my videos, and that is because I like this Uniformation GK2 3D printer. If you like it as well, you can check out the link in my description for an affiliate link to buy one. In this model, there is going to be some lights, as you may have seen in the beginning of this video, and I'm going to need some LEDs to make that happen. Once I've got all my parts printed and the dust has been settled, I then uh, attach some magnets into the parts in order to make these pieces go together uh, without being broken if I were to ever ship this thing. Not that I was going to ship it, but maybe I was going to move my house and I was going to have a problem moving the model. In the past, I've glued almost all my models and I'm going to severely regret that one day and I'm going to make a change from now on. This is how the model looks before I painted it, and of course I like to put things together to make sure everything fits well, and if it doesn't, that is the time you have to sand it or scrape it or whatever you need to do to make it fit well then, because your next step is to attach them somehow to some kind of a stick or holding device of some sort, and then use your favourite Primer paint and spray Primer all over them. Once you have done sprayed them with Primer, then try to hang them as precariously as possible. If a part falls now, this is a part of the excitement and you need to embrace that as it happens. And now, as I mentioned, I was going to light this base up on this model, so in order to do that, I printed the base and the parts that were going to light up in a clear resin. This resin that I used is the Anycubic clear resin. I do not cure this too far. If you cure this for too much, it will go yellow. It looks like somebody peed on your model. Don't do it. Uh, uh, try not to cure it too much. It's not a good idea. But as you can tell, I'm masking off all the areas that I want the light to still show through. And this is because there is a nice solid painted area at the bottom, which I could paint this by brush, meaning that I didn't have to spend any time masking it. But I felt like if I just masked it, I could then do a little bit more effects to it, like spraying some washes and a little bit of shades and shadows onto it, just for a little bit more interest on that piece. When I was done adding some effects with the washes, it was as simple as painting the symbol black, and that's pretty much it. Most of the base painting was a pretty self-explanatory uh, situation. If you watched with your eyeballs, you would have noticed that it was pretty straightforward. It was a layer after a layer, and that was it. I then unmasked everything so that I could get to work on the pentagram that is on top of this base, and I painted that with a sort of lightish, almost desaturated orange. I mixed a little bit of white into the orange just to make it not too bright, but essentially, I wanted it to look like something when the lights weren't on. For this particular project, I'm going to use an ESP32 board. The only reason why is because it can connect to my phone. I don't think that is necessary for this particular project, but I did use some addressable LEDs, and in order to do that, you can run a program or essentially an app on this little board, which is called WLED, and you can then program the LEDs that you uh, plug to it or solder to it to do things if you wanted to. On the base, there is some fire, and I printed that in clear as well. I also then painted that because I could have lit this up with the LEDs and a certain color, but it would look weird if I didn't light it up and it was just sitting on the shelf with no batteries plugged in. So I painted it to look like the fire in the renders that were made by the sculptor. Speaking of the sculptor, now would be a really good time for me to tell you that this video was sponsored by CA3D Studios. What is CA3D Studios, you might be asking, and I will, uh, I'm here to tell you exactly what it is. This is a Patreon over on Patreon where you sign up and you receive Around six or seven models a month, which are sculpted for you to 3D print in your 3D printers and then paint and stick on your shelf. Also, I must mention that after your fifth month of being with them, their loyalty rewards is something like you have access to pretty much all their previous models. And I must just say, these guys create some really, really epic models. They have a bunch of different sculptors, so there is a bunch of different styles, as well as different uh, types and genres, and all sorts of different characters. If you are interested in 3D printing characters, or you like this model in this particular video, 
then make sure to check out the link in my description for 3DCA 3D Studios. Uh, they are an amazing sponsor of this channel and I would like to say a special thank you to them for sponsoring yet another video and uh, let's get back into painting uh, magic. It's magic, and I am going to paint magical pinkle across the skin. I've previously mentioned this in videos. Basically, in order to do skin tones, particularly on female characters, I use a black base with a white zenithal and then pinkle. It's literally just purple, but in my mind, it's kind of the purple between purple and pink. And once you have got a good layer of pinkle down, I take a red transparent and I spray that through the bottoms, which creates a really nice transition between the purple and the pinkle and the red. And there's like this really cool magenta stuff going on. It's a really good base for female skin tones that are white. And speaking of the skin tones, this is the colors that I use in pretty much exactly this order. And I'm going to show you roughly how I did it uh, very quickly because it's a YouTube video. I can't really make these too long because as it is, not many people watch for more than three or four minutes most videos anyway. And that looks really bad in the algorithm. So I'm not going to be making extended versions of stuff like this because people just don't watch it. And it's not really worth anybody's time to do that. However, over on my Patreon, I've decided that once a month at the bare minimum I'm going to take one of the models from that month and I'm going to extend the footage so that you can get the full extended version of painting a specific topic uh, this makes no sense words are really hard I don't know how to explain it but I think you understand what I mean basically on patreon I have made for this particular model three separate videos one of them is 37 minutes long and it goes over how I painted the face of this model another one of them actually also goes over how I painted the skin I only use two parts of it but there is no sped up videos no cuts or whatever uh, this is available for anyone who joins my patreon uh, from the didn't off crew and above and uh, that is just another way I can say thank you for supporting my channel because without you guys I wouldn't be able to blind my eyes with the lights of the patreon I'm nearly done with the skin tones I'm adding some highlights onto it to make sure that it is nice and bright this part of the sword was the part that I was dreading the entire time because I didn't even know how the heck I was going to mask this and I'm not 100% satisfied with what I actually did but it came out alright and uh, I accept it. What else can I do? I have a very very short time limit for making these things. I produce one video every week so it's really difficult for me to keep up with stuff most of the time. If I have a mistake uh, I might not get a video out in time so I just have to roll with whatever decision I make and just hope for the best. But as you can tell it came out alright if I have to say so myself. What I can say is that I was just very careful with the airbrush. I lowered my pressure and made sure to try and not get any overspray onto any of the flames. Once I was done with that, I gave it a solid black coat over all the trimming that's on the sword and I gave it an edge highlight of a lightish gray just around most of the edges. In fact, almost all of the edges except for the symbols on the inside because nobody got time for doing that. Then it was time to work on the leather that Magic wears. And another area that I feel like I, if I had more time, I would have put a little bit more effort into this. And by effort, what I mean is at the end, I wish that I could have glossed this and come back and put a mat over the skins. But it is what it is. We're here. The way that I did this suit was just by painting it black i painted a solid black vallejo matte black is one of the best paints you can use for this because you can thin it down and it just paints really really nicely and easily once i was done with a good solid flat matte black uh, layer then i just took my airbrush and very carefully with a low air pressure sprayed a purple that i mixed into the black and uh, I just sprayed that from sort of the highlight areas. If you're careful enough, it won't really overspray too much. But even if it does, because you have a lot of purples already in your skin tones, it might not be too noticeable. But obviously, you need to be extremely careful with this. Because if you get it on the skin, you have to go back to square one. And nobody ever wants to do that. 
Once I was satisfied with where the highlights went, I felt like there wasn't enough color. And the reason that I felt like that is essentially just because there was black in all the shadows and black is literally just no color. There is no color in it. So in order to give it some kind of at least feeling like it's not flat, I sprayed Drakenhof Nightshade, which is a blue, essentially as a tint over all the black shades across the model. It doesn't read as blue. It will read as black, but it has color over it, so it kind of tricks your eyes to not looking boring. I don't know. It, I don't know. It does the thing that it does, just if you want to do it, right? For the electronics of this build, I needed to add a couple of these addressable LEDs and luckily a while ago I had bought a couple of these loose individual ones and so what you're seeing me do here is using some legs from some resistors in order to just wire them up and uh, this just saves me having to do them all separately because that would have taken too long and nobody's got time for that. Essentially, you want to wire these up to the power, the negative and then I think it was number 13. Okay, that was an absolute lie. It's not number 13. It is IO16. It's 16. It's the output and input uh, option 16 uh, that you can get the get friggin connection to be able to adjust the light, whatever. If you understand what it means, you understand what it means. This is not an electronics channel. So realistically, I can't explain an entire friggin programming and soldering, whatever's bro. If you're working on this thing, just type into YouTube or Google ESP32 how to do this thing and it should hopefully come up and help you with that. She has the emblem on her arm and this is a pretty simple thing to paint really. It's got to be red and in order to paint red at any point in your life, just put white or even a light grey underneath it and thank me later because trust me, it will look poor if you don't. Her arm has got a metallic armor all over it, so in order to kind of make that look metallic, I used the same colors as the rest of her suit so that it blended in, but over the top of that I dry brushed some dark silver so that it gave it that metallic sheen on the edges of it. I also came back and added a couple of highlights to her hair uh, just so that it didn't look so flat, and I did this by just using my normal painting brush and sort of using the side or the edge of it to do that. On her face, this is one of probably a very few times where I would add a bit of makeup. I don't know why, but this character felt like it had makeup on, so I added a little bit of a dark greyish eyeshadow. I have no idea how makeup or any of that works, uh, so if I did it wrong, it's it, tough. I don't even know. I don't even know how makeup works. I never done it in my life. Don't know where it goes. I'm not gonna lie. I don't pay that much attention when I look at uh, people's faces. You may have noticed that my eyes look a little bit different to previous models and that is because I have slightly tweaked the eye painting technique that I use in order to make it just a little bit better and this might be what I'm going to probably be using from now on into future models. That being said, that is not a guarantee because I don't actually know if I'm going to take this technique further but if you are interested in this technique there will be a full video on this on my Patreon and uh, if you watch that video, you'll know a little bit more about how I did it. Basically, it's a very similar technique to painting the blacks and uh, painting the whites over the black and making shaping of the eyeballs and then putting in an eyeball and then putting black with a little highlight, putting a bit of gloss over the top and calling your model done.